Welcome to the interviews episode three, and with me today is Jordan Syed. And if you are a fitness minded person that follows this podcast, there's a good chance that you're familiar with at least some of his work. But what I'm going to do here starting out is just hand this over to Jordan, let him tell you a little bit about who he is, what he's up to, and we'll go from there. Well, what's up, my man? Thank you for having me on the podcast. I appreciate it. Um, not too much to say other than I am I'm a fitness coach, a strength coach, nutrition coach, and I am obsessed with Harry Potter. I and I love my mother very much. I always got to say that. My mom, Andrea, God bless her. And um, basically, my fitness um, credo is trying to find what you love most when, at whatever point you are in your life and you can sustain forever without having to feel like you have to suffer through it or give up everything, just trying to incorporate by being able to achieve, to reach your goals in a way that allows you to live life to the fullest rather than trying to fit your life into nutrition, being able to fit nutrition and strength training and all that into your life. So basically you're fitting fitness and nutrition into your life and not trying to do it the other way around where you're wrapping your life around programs and systems and worrying about being good, bad, all that stuff. Yeah, basically like I never want someone to feel like they can't go out to a dinner with friends or family because they feel like they're they're gonna ruin their progress or they get nervous about the holidays because the they don't wanna to backtrack or they don't wanna go on vacation or they're nervous about going on vacation and, and getting fat over vacation and then they can't even enjoy vacation and then they come back from vacation, they didn't even have a vacation because they're just worrying about the food the whole time. I want you to be able to enjoy your life because when it boils down to it, when you're 90 years old and you're looking back on your life, you're not gonna look back at the vacation or the Thanksgiving or the whatever and be like, oh my God, I'm so glad I didn't have the pumpkin pie. You're gonna be like, why the fuck didn't I have the pumpkin pie? Because I thought I was gonna get fat and I sort of wanna help people understand before they regret it. And you know, I'm, I'm with you on that because there's so many people that when I talk to them, it's like, okay, we're, we're gonna go on vacation and okay, what's the plan gonna be while I'm on vacation? I'm gonna be gone for seven to 10 days and, and you know, I, I wanna stay on track and it's like, when you're looking back years from now, you're not going to remember when you were perfect on calories or perfect on macros or, you know, that you followed Weight Watchers to a T. You're going it, to, it's about the experiences that you have and, you know, the people that you, that you meet and interact with. And what I really like that you led with, you, you said how important your mom is to kind of everything that it is that, that you do. Um, is it really just kind of the, the confidence that she helped and still in you at an early age is that is that what a lot of were a lot from your mom yeah i think that i mean i'm sure the confidence is huge um i think probably one of the greatest things that she did, like she did a lot for me because i mean she was basically a single mother who worked her ass off to give my brother and i whatever whatever we needed not necessarily whatever we wanted but whatever we needed we had and um and I think one of the best things that she did for me was she never let me give up ever. And it didn't matter what it was, like it, if it, like in whether it was applying for my first ever personal training job, whether it was joining, a, like playing a musical instrument and, and saying I was going to do it for X amount of time, she would never, she would never let me quit before I had given it enough time, before I either my obligation to it was up, she would always hold me to a standard of if you say you're gonna do something, you finish it out. And I remember it was like, there would be times when, when other kids would just be like, ah, you know, I quit, I didn't wanna do that. And I would tell my mom, I'd be like, mom, but so-and-so, they quit, like they're not doing it anymore. And she'd be like, I don't give a fuck, or she wouldn't say that, but she's like, I don't care what other parents are doing or allowing their kids to do. If you say you're gonna do something, then you're gonna finish it. I think it's probably one of the best things she ever did for me, because it showed me that you can't just quit when you don't like it or if it doesn't go your way right away. You have to keep on right. pushing. Right. And, well, and that actually, you know, it's just the stuff that, that you do. And I, I think you, like anyone else, there's a lot of things that you try. Um, some of it's successful. Some of it you look back, you're like, eh, didn't really work out all that well. And some of it you just kind of adjust and move forward. Where is it for you now as an adult, if you're trying something and you're seeing that it's not working out, um, 
when do you kind of look at it and say, okay, it's, it's time to do something different? And if you've got an example of something like that, that'd be awesome if you'd share it. Well, so there's a great book. Uh, it's called The Dip. And Have you ever heard of The Dip? Um, I don't recall the title. Who's the author of it? I'm almost positive it's Seth Godin. I'm almost positive, okay. but I could be wrong. Um, okay. Really a tremendous book. And basically, the premise is, it says, like, everyone always says, quitters never win and winners never quit. But that's wrong because their premise being the the people who win most are the best quitters in that they know when something is worth investing in and struggling through and pushing through and they know when something just isn't worth their time and they quit immediately they just like before it becomes a bigger thing they're like i'm gonna stop it um so i'll tell you one thing for example that that i didn't quit on which i've, I've been very grateful for is uh my inner circle i started my inner circle back in 2015 and there were a number of people around that time that really started to try and build membership subscriptions. And I remember when I started it, I said to myself, I'm gonna give it at least 12 months, which is 12 editions, because it's it's month by month. I was like, I'll give it 12 months before I decide that I, you know, maybe it's not a good fit. And I remember several other people who were close friends and colleagues of mine started uh, their own around the same time. And within three to six months, they had all quit. Um, because it didn't go the way they wanted. And they were like, how's yours going? And I was like, ah, like it's going all right. It's not where I want it, but I'm, I told myself I'd give it at least 12 months. And I'm so glad I did because it took that long for it to really start to to take the shape and form that I, that I had hoped for. And it, it, which basically means that from the first, I'd say eight to 10 months, it was not what I wanted it to be. And it was a struggle and it was a fight. But because I'd made a deal with myself to go 12 months with it, I wasn't going to quit. I wasn't going to stop it. And I knew there was potential. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. I can't think of anything that I was like, I'm going to quit on this right away. But for I think that there's there's different periods and times for, for different things. So for example, about two years ago, I was really focusing most of my time on, on Facebook, spending a lot of time on video on Facebook and, and building my audience there. And it went from about 5,000 up to uh, upwards of 40,000 within the time of about six to eight months. But then I started focusing much more on Instagram. And at the beginning, my time was split relatively evenly, but as Instagram started to grow and, and, and like rapidly, I realized that my time would be better spent on Instagram than Facebook, and I essentially more or less quit Facebook for the time being. I didn't give it up forever. I'm actually getting back on now more, more frequently, but for that period of time, I knew it was within my benefit to quit Facebook because I would get more benefit out of Instagram. So that's what I did, and I was I'm very grateful that I made that decision. Um, and it's not that Facebook's bad, and I think it, Facebook has tremendous benefit, and I'm actually I'm going back to it now, but that's just one example of being able to say, hey, where where is my time better spent right now? I'm okay giving this up for this moment because there's gonna be something more beneficial. Right, right, and it's, and it's crazy when it comes to the social media platforms because it's it's changing, and when stuff, stuff will work for a certain amount of time, can, might even just be as little as a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden something else is is becoming hugely popular and you do you have to adjust kind of where you're spending your time and you know i saw a post that you put out um really for people that are wanting to be fitness coaches or fitness professionals and there's so many words that people try to use interchangeably with this and one of them is um being an entrepreneur and i really I liked your take on that because I think if you really, really get into this stuff, you have to be in this to help people. This is not, it, it isn't really a glamorous profession and you really, really, it's its about connecting with people one-on-one -on -one and, and really kind of seeing where they are and, and helping them move forward in an individual way. So a lot of these things where they're talking about like templates and things like that, it's, it's not set it or forget it. It's a lot of of client service and customer service and I mean what would you say to anyone that's just saying right now you know what I think I want to help people I want to be a fitness coach what would you tell them to focus on and what would you tell them to stay away from I would tell them to focus on being the absolute absolute best coach you can possibly be in the world 
understanding not only like human anatomy and physiology and understanding um, program design and nutrition and, and human metabolism and how all that works, but also understanding human behavior and psychology and emotion, uh, learning not only why people not only just learning about necessarily obesity, for example, but learning about why people make the decisions that they make and the habits they get into, learning how to communicate with people, how to talk with people, how to, I, one of the, my my best examples that I think I could give is a lot of coaches, they, they one of the, coaching is one of the highest burnout rates of any job, especially within the first year, so many coaches burn out. And I think it's because they people get into it not because they want to help people a lot of times, but because they like working out and they like being in the gym and like, well, I would love this, I could do this. And they don't realize that one of the major aspects of being a coach is being a motivator and being someone's support system and being there to help them and encourage them. Um, and I, rem I know that a lot of coaches will f use a fallback excuse to be like, my job isn't to motivate, my job is to give you the plan and your job is to execute. And I'm always like, I don't know what the fuck world you live in, but absolutely your job is to motivate. And I'll give you, tell you a reason why. I guarantee you, you have one or two favorite teachers from high school or college or whatever. And those teachers that were your favorite were the ones that took extra time that they weren't getting paid for to help you after school, to help you early before school, to help you on extra work, to give you the, the extra time that you needed that went far above and beyond their their job description as a teacher and that's how they earned your respect and that's why you'll remember them until until you're 90 years old you'll always remember that and like that's the coach that I want to be I want to be the coach that people will always remember that's not what his job description is that's not what he was paid for that's not what like that's not even the reason I signed up to work with him but that extra motivation that he gave me is what allowed me to really know that he cared about me and showed me that I could succeed and I think that's where a lot of coaches, they, they miss that. And so I would say focus on being the best you can for every individual. And, it, and at any time you start to get pulled towards the, well, how to build your, your business and how to scale your systems and how to get automated systems and how to get more clients. And they're like, when any time you get pulled towards that end, I wouldn't say ignore it, but I would say if you start to feel like you're doing things wrong because you aren't in that world, fuck that, like absolutely not. You do not have to be a expert marketer or you don't have to understand like email lists at a very high level or you don't have to understand advertising because you can build a massively successful business solely through helping people and giving them the best coaching experience because even today, even with Instagram over 400K and Facebook over 50K and whatever, like all that stuff, even today, my biggest influx of, of either people as one-on-one -on -one clients or inner circle members specifically is through referrals. It's people saying, this guy has really helped me. You'll like him a lot. And referrals, I think, are the best way to build a business that not only is successful, but is long-lasting. Because as, as long as you base your business off of people speaking highly of you, then you're required to give your absolute best every day. So basically, as long as you're a coach and a support system, all the marketing, all the, the stuff that you hear about, the fancy stuff will all take care of itself. That's exactly right. If somebody's listening to this and they've been trying to lose weight for years and they feel like they're constantly starting over, what is one thing that they should do today to get themselves on the right track for really, hopefully, for the rest of their life? So say, say it one more time. For people who, who like can, are yo-yo dieting, well, yeah, either somebody that's been yo-yo dieting or somebody that's been constantly starting and stopping, but for whatever they've been doing, they've been at this for years and it just hasn't worked out. Got it. one thing that they could do just to get started on the right direction for good? Usually what will happen is one of the main reasons people will start and stop is because the stopping stems from a point in which they feel like A, either it's not working and or B, they fucked up and they made a mistake. And it's like, well, you know what? Well, what's the point? I already screwed up. I might as well just keep screwing up and it's just not gonna happen for me. And the best advice that I can give is to really deeply internalize that you cannot fuck up. You, it, I don't care if you go over your calories by 5,000. I don't care if you go off track for a week, a month, six months. You have to get it in your head and really deeply internalize in your heart and your mind that you, it's impossible to screw up. You truly cannot mess up as long as you get back on track. 
And when you understand that on a very deep level that you can't screw up as long as you get back on track, all of a sudden the, the need to quote unquote stop, the need to like take a break from it all, it sort of goes away because you realize it, it's not like you're not failing, you're not messing up, you're not backtracking, you're simply, you're, you're just in a, in, a, in a moment of time in which you're not doing it and that's okay and it doesn't mean you're losing progress it doesn't mean you're failing all it means is that okay i'm taking a, a night off or i'm taking like a, a, enjoying this meal and not counting my calories and that's fine and then you get right back on track and you continue moving forward and the the more deeply you can internalize that the the more likely you are to stay on track and not go through that start again stop again cycle because it's no longer a, a failure mindset it's just hey this is a longer term process mindset Yep, and you just you keep going, and eventually it, it sorts itself out. Well, that's it. That's right. Well, Jordan, I appreciate the time today, man. And what I'm going to do here before before we head off, I just want you to tell folks what is it you want them to check out right now, and if they want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do so? Um, I would say, well, if you're listening here, I have my own podcast. It's the Jordan Syatt Mini Podcast. You can find me there. You can find me on Instagram at Syatt Fitness. Um, those are probably the main places I would go right now. And if you have any questions, you can always email me, jordan at syattfitness.com. I answer all my own emails. So anything you need, I'm always happy to help. Awesome. Well, Jay, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the time today. I appreciate you chatting with me. And uh, good luck with everything you're working on. And I'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you, man. Have a good one. You too.